In this video, I'm gonna be going over the five most common weight loss expectations, giving you the actual reality of those so you don't get frustrated when you're trying to lose weight. Stay tuned. Hey guys, what's going on? Shane at Shane Hubbard Fit. Thanks a ton for tuning into today's video. If you're somebody out there who is about to start a weight loss journey or you've tried to lose weight in the past but you keep hitting these roadblocks and you're getting frustrated, this video is perfect for you. So what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna list uh, some of the most common weight loss expectations that I've gotten either from my clients or from stories that I've uh, watched or listened to or seen. And I wanna help debunk a lot of these expectations um, because a lot of times what happens is when somebody meet, doesn't meet these expectations, they quit, they give up, they think they're a failure, they think they're doing it wrong, they don't know what to do instead. And so I wanna help clarify a lot of these common expectations, either just from people that are, have never lost weight before, or you know, just from the general public that kind of gives this information. So let's go ahead and get started. So if you guys are ready to learn about these expectations and what to do instead of them, go ahead and give me a quick little thumbs up on this video, I'd really appreciate it. All right, so now that we're ready to go, let's go over number one, which is you are going to expect to lose the same amount of weight every single week, all right? I wish this was true because it would be so much more simple to explain to people that they're gonna lose the same amount of weight each and every week, but that is simply not true, all right? If I look at my own client data, some people lose three pounds in a week and then they only lose one, and they lose two pounds in a week and they only lose you know, half a pound, and some people consistently through the entire program have a fluctuation between one pound and a half a pound. What I like to tell my clients is don't worry about how much weight you lose every single week. Focus instead on the trend of weight loss. So if you've consistently lost half a pound you know, every other week or every week and you're moving in the right direction, that's the only thing you need to focus on. Don't worry about how much it is or how frequently it, you know, it happens in the sense that you're always losing two pounds. A variation from how much weight you lose really isn't a huge deal. It's gonna be different every single week. And I think I've only had one client where it was consistent for an entire month. And then I have some clients that didn't lose any weight for three weeks and then all of a sudden they lost you know, three to four pounds. So don't get discouraged by what the scale says. You really just wanna use it as a tool to track a trend. So if I was to look at your weight loss over the course of a month and then compare it to the months previous or the months coming up, what I would want to be able to see is, is there a consistent trend of weight loss of some kind? I don't care what the specific number is per week. I care about the trend being consistently going downward. All right, so now that we've talked about the most common weight loss expectation, let's go to number two, which is that your food has to be boring and bland in order to be healthy. Now there is going to be some variation in taste, right? Remember when it comes to junk food and fast foods, they on a scale of one to 10 have like a pleasure rating of 12 because they're engineered and they're designed to make the flavor really, really intense. When you eat healthier food and whole foods, it's not going to be that intense, right? It still can taste good. You don't have to eat bland chicken breast and raw broccoli in order to be healthy. You have to find a, a balance between healthy and tasty food. And there's definitely a balance there that you can experiment with and have lots of variety. But expect food to taste a little bit more bland, right? It's not gonna be this flavor fest that you're used to having. It's going to, it should taste good. It should be flavor filled, but it's not going to be as intense. And don't worry about this. This is extremely common, extremely normal. Your taste buds are gonna need some time to change, all right? Our taste buds adapt to what we eat. If you eat something that's really, really flavorful, your taste buds will adapt and expect that. If you eat something that's well-balanced between taste and health, you're going to eventually get used to that. I, I know it's hard to believe, but I actually crave broccoli almost every single day when I eat because I've gotten into a habit of eating broccoli in a way that works best for me. So I know that it's probably cliche to say healthy food will taste good eventually, but trust me, over time as your palate changes, you will actually start to crave the very foods that you thought you would never ever wanna eat consistently. Okay, so that moves us on to expectation number three, which is that you're going to have to do a lot of exercise in order to lose body fat. The very first thing I'll say is, is that I've helped people lose body fat without any exercise. I'm not saying that that's what everyone should do, but in some cases, people don't have the you know, time to exercise or they really just wanna lose weight and nutrition's their main focus, and so that's what I do to help them lose weight. Now, in a perfect world, what I'd like to see is some exercise, some nutrition, and then everything else that goes in between. That's a perfect world. 
not everyone starts there. All right. So understand that you don't actually need exercise to lose body fat, but that you should try to implement it any way that you can. All right. So that means that you don't need to spend one to two hours on a cardio machine or even lifting weights or anything like that. At the most, you want to spend about 45 minutes to an hour a day working out. And you only really want to do that three to four times a week. And if you're very brand new, especially if you're really, really overweight and you have like a hundred pounds to lose, you really don't want to do more than two strength training sessions and maybe some cardio in the form of walking. So don't get this idea in your head that you always have to be exercising to lose body fat. There's plenty of people out there that have lose, lost weight just with diet alone. And if that's where you need to start, that's where you start. And then you implement exercise as you go. So I just wanted to debunk that. You don't have to do you know, 45 hours of cardio a week in order to lose body fat. You can get away with simply doing one to two strength training sessions a week. Um, and you can even get some just some simple walking in and that can help produce a lot of uh, fat loss. All right, moving on to number four. This is probably my favorite weight loss expectation because it's one of the ones that I've been wanting to talk about for a really long time. And that is that you'll always be motivated to hit your workouts, to eat your food, to get your sleep, to get your walking and your hydration, all the stuff you need to do, that you're always gonna be motivated because you're like, yes, let's do it, let's crush. That's awesome and everything if you can do that, but you are going to hit a boring zone, right? In the beginning, when you're going to the gym, you're eating your meals, you're doing all the things you need to do, it's kind of exciting. It's like, all right, I'm really you know, kicking ass, I'm making this happen, I'm doing something good for myself, but after a while, it's going to become routine. It's gonna be normal to go to the gym, it's gonna be normal to eat the healthy thing, it's gonna be normal to do all these things that you should be doing, and you're gonna hit the boring zone. The boring zone is extremely normal, it usually happens within two to three weeks, um, of, of starting any type of plan or any type of weight loss journey. And if you don't believe me, go to any gym after March and see how empty it is and you'll see exactly what happens to a lot of people's New Year's resolutions. If you're the kind of person out there that usually breaks off after about February from a New Year's resolution, let me know in the comments section below. So when you hit this boring zone, don't freak out. It's completely normal. The best thing you can do is just realize that now you've transitioned into focusing on something different, focusing on how workouts make you feel afterwards. They give you energy, they make you feel good, they change kind of your perspective on things, they give you kind of that boost. And then when you eat healthy meals, how do you feel afterwards? Do you feel good, do you feel tired, do you feel lethargic? You wanna start focusing on these cues that your body gives you after you participate in something like uh, a lifting session for 45 minutes or a healthy meal. Start paying attention to those things and that will be a new motivation for you because when you start to feel good, that's better than just seeing a number on the scale go down, right? That can make you feel good too, but you have to realize that one of the most important things is how you feel when you are doing all these healthy habits. All right, so let's shift gears a little bit and talk about the last one, number five, which is you will be hungry all of the time because you're cutting calories and that's normal. You should be hungry all the time. Nothing could be further from the truth. You don't want to be starving the entire time that you're trying to lose body fat. Yes, in the grand scheme of things, you are eating less calories, but there are ways to eat less calories without eating less food. I actually just did a video about some of the most common weight loss uh, myths out there, and uh, this is what we talked about in that video. And there's this idea that you have to always eat less food, but there's a way to eat less calories without eating less food. And that's by focusing on the amount of protein that you get and the amount of vegetables that you get, all right? If you can eat the majority of your meals packed with vegetables and protein, and then have kind of like, you know, your more pleasure seeking foods like mashed potatoes and mac and cheese in smaller portions on the side, you're going to be able to actually probably eat more food than you were before, but you're going to feel full, you're gonna feel satisfied, you're not gonna be as hungry, which is a lot different than when you eat these junk foods. When you go to a fast food place, you can get you know, like 800 calories worth of food that just kind of makes you feel full. Whereas if you focus on vegetables and protein, you know, whether you're meal prepping or you're going out to eat, and if you focus on these foods, they can fill you up pretty quickly and not leave you feeling like, man, I could eat a whole nother, you know, hamburger or a whole nother cheeseburger because of the fiber and the protein in those meals. So if you're somebody who's trying to lose body fat and you don't want to do the common thing that most people do, which is like just taking what you eat and cutting it in half and saying, oh, well, this is all I'll eat your appetite will come back full force and try to fight you on that. So you wanna to try to avoid that as much as you can by focusing on bulking up your meals with vegetables and proteins and then having a smaller portion of kind of your more flavor rich foods like mac and cheese and potatoes and beans and stuff like that. 
All right, guys, so that is my video for today. If this video helped you out, kind of debunk some of those common mistakes that people make and those common expectations they set for themselves, let me know in the comments section below. And as always, guys, if this video helped you kind of change your mindset about weight loss, about what to expect, I would really appreciate it if you shared it with other people that are trying to lose weight because one of the things that's so frustrating about losing weight is what to expect, what to do, and being able to prepare yourself mentally. I've had clients in the past who have kind of done it on their own and they always seem to fail because they don't have these expectations. So the more people out there that know what to expect and what to focus on, the better success we'll have with weight loss, with curing obesity, with getting over all of these, these unhealthy diseases that are plaguing our society today. So I would really appreciate it if you guys shared it. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, please leave them down in the comments section below. And then before you go, don't forget to like this video. I would really appreciate it. And if you like this video and you would like to be reminded when more videos come out, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and make sure to hit the bell that's associated with that subscribe button so that you get notifications when new videos come out and you can be the first one to watch them. All right, guys, as always, it has been a pleasure making this video for you. Thanks for tuning in today. I will see you in a future video. All right, Mr. Impatient, just go outside and do your fucking whatever the fuck you gotta do. But a lot of people think the more exercise they do, the faster the, 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 the fuck. Restart.